We're going to go on to our feature story for the evening. And the pangolin is the world's most trafficked mammal. No one truly knows its conservation status in Kenya. Now, when COVID-19 broke out in March, some medical researchers linked the coronavirus to the horseshoe bat. Other researchers suspected the Malayan or Javan pangolin to be the intermediate host of coronavirus before it jumped to human beings. But is the pangolin really guilty as charged? Well, tonight, our special report, Pangolins in the Dock, dissects the available research and makes a case for the survival of the already endangered mammal. Our very own Dorcas Wangira reports this should well be the moment to acquit the pangolin. Some scientists believe that the global COVID-19 pandemic is nothing short of nature's revenge. Non-respect of nature in one country can spread to the rest of humanity. If indeed this virus has jumped from wildlife to humans, there is something in nature is saying. It is human nature to look for a culprit, either human or animal, during epidemics like Ebola, MARS, SARS and the Marburg virus, with the emergence of COVID-19, the designated culprits were bats and pangolins. Kenyan scientists are also investigating whether bats and pangolins stand correctly accused. It is premature to say that COVID-19 got primed up from pangolin before it crept to human being. Pangolins may well be in the scientists' dock for a case they have no opportunity to defend themselves. That defense, ironically, lies with the same scientists and researchers. There is no conclusive evidence that it was pangolins uh, that, that uh, have led to COVID-19. But what it has done is it's shone a, a big light on the, on the trade of pangolin and on pangolin poaching. Pangolin are mammals. They're the only mammals that are covered uh, in this fine armour of scales. Um, they are covered over the top portion in scales, but their underbelly and their nose are, are scale-less um, and covered in skin and, and then hairs as well. Um, they uh, only eat ants and termite species. <laughs> They are very shy and almost always come out at night. Chalongo Conservancy in Marungu Ward Voi is part of the Salvo Conservation Area in Taita Taveta County. It is one of the places in this country where you are likely and lucky to see a pangolin. Fanuel Mozame, a wildlife scout, shows us the barrows where pangolins live. Pangolins do not dig their own barrows, but make use of abandoned aardvark, porcupine, and warthog barrows. They may also shelter in termite holes, caves, in between rocks, shrubs, or piles of debris. <laughs> In Chamani village, Marungu Ward, residents who have seen live pangolins tell us their story. Na pangolin, mbatu na mwita kitaita makimama, hee hata kumpata kwa katu huu ni vigumu sana. Lapta miguu zaki peke ya kendo utazipata. Lakini haonikani. Ni mnyama ambaye yuanekana, yuanenda pole pole, aki potea katika hii dunia. Hei yuko fana yake kama kobe, lakini si kobe, alafu wakababutuzo wanito marwala. In the Amboseli ecosystem, David Lomorot, a resident of Kimana, describes it. Ana story mingi ni mnyama ambayo ni mpole sana. Atuli ipenda kwa sababu ni kitu rembo, ni kitu siyo raisi patikani. The unique ant eaters have very long and sticky tongues. They are extremely shy, and when they sense danger or discomfort, they curl up into a ball as a defense mechanism. So it's easy for you at night if you move and try to miss it because it will freeze and stay still where it is. And all species of pangolin do this. So in curling up into a ball, they protect the soft underbelly and their heads um, from predation. And it means that that outer scale, uh, that outer layer of scales, forms a tight armor um, that can protect them from predators such as lions, hyenas, and leopards. 
Like other mammal species, they give birth to one young one at a time, but they can also have twins which is rarely recorded. There is no precise information about their gestation period. They breastfeed their young for the first two to three months in their life, keeping them in barrows. This footage, filmed by camera traps by the Pangolin Project, shows that pangolin pups ride on the backs of their mothers in order to move about. They move slowly, almost like chameleons, but they are very strong. Their birth rate is very low and they give birth to young. Survival of a, ba of a baby is very low. They stay up to five months, some a year long, before they move off and establish their own territories. Females move into male territories. Once established there, the males mate with females. Dr. Claire O'Kell is a scientist and researcher with a background in veterinary science, epidemiology and research, and is the director of the Pangolin Project. Pangolin uh, do not do very well at all in captivity and it has been completely unsuccessful to keep them within zoos or to reproduce them within uh, a captive environment. Globally, there are eight species of pangolin found in Asia and Africa. All eight of them are threatened with extinction. In Africa, there are four species, the black-bellied pangolin, the white-bellied tree pangolin, and the giant ground pangolin, all of them threatened with extinction. And the Taminx ground pangolin, which is listed as vulnerable to extinction, the giant ground pangolin weighs over 25 kilograms, the largest in the world, and can live for 20 to 25 years. The African pangolin species are native to 15 African countries, countries dispersed throughout southern, central and east Africa. The Taminx ground pangolin is the only species found in southern and eastern Africa. Kenya is home to three species of pangolins according to Agwanda, a taxidermist and research scientist at the National Museums of Kenya. Three pangolin, particularly in Kakamega for instance, and the Loita Hills where this one was collected last year. The ground pangolin unfortunately is found around the lake Victoria region and um, we have not had a record for the last about 40 years. We moved to the parts of Mwingi, Kitui, Masai Mara for the Grand Pangolin and uh, of course the Kerio Valley which is many people have not noticed. South Turkana National Reserve and the adjoining areas. Hapa lumo tuko na giant pangolin ambao tunawanaga kibahati sana last four years night game drive now again. The name Pangolin comes from the old Malaysian word Pengulig, meaning the one that rolls up. There is no general word for the Pangolin in Kenya. Different communities have their own local names. Kiswahili inasikia naitwa kaka kuona. In West Pokot, um, the word for Pangolin is Amikama. Lugha yetu ya Kimasai inaitwa Endabwe. Endabwe ni inamaanisha ni mnyama sio rahisi patikani. But when we spoke to elders about pangolin, and we asked them about pangolin and about Enterboy, elders had a very specific story that pangolin were good luck, and that if you saw this, you were very, very lucky to see it. It was not something that you saw particularly often, um, and therefore you were blessed if you saw it. Dr. Philip Muruthi is a chief scientist, the vice president for species for the Africa Wildlife Foundation. The last time I, I saw a pangolin was actually in Laikipia, about uh, five years ago. Only recently that I have come to be aware that pangolins are even eaten. There is a folklore in many African communities, one of love and witchcraft. It is believed that when mixed with bark from certain trees, the scales of pangolins neutralize witchcraft and evil spirits. Some tribes believe that if sighted, there will be a drought. If buried near a man's door, they are said to give an interested woman power over him. Some believe that the smoke from their scales improves cattle health and keeps lions away. <laughs> In West Africa, pangolin is a, a nice meat, so people use it as a bush meat. And um, we say that uh, they also have the culture of if a king is coming to visit you under the traditional governance system, there are several animals that you can prepare a meal from for the king, pangolins being one of them. In short, the African culture of use of pangolin is sustainable until commercial interest comes into play.
The demand in Asia, however, is extremely high. The Asian pangolin species, the Philippine or Palawan pangolin, the Malayan or Sunda pangolin, and the Indian or thick-tailed pangolin are critically endangered with extinction, and the Chinese pangolin is classified on the IUCN red list as endangered with extinction. Traditionally, with it, for traditional Chinese medicine, it was believed that pangolin scales uh, were something that p- could be used um, and combined with other herbs and with acupuncture and and could be made uh, from medicine that was that was used a lot to deal with blood disorders. Asian people by their culture they use pangolin scales, meat and soup for various reasons. Scales as a charm. Once they did away with the with the with the Asian pangolins, the levels of consumption were really impacting those species. We are seeing an increase in, in Africa. Pangolins are at the edge of existence. Even though they face habitat loss in a developed and developing world, the poaching and illegal wildlife trafficking is making them functionally extinct. All eight species were upgraded to CITES Appendix 1, so by the, the Convention for the International Trade of Endangered Species. Uh, they were given the highest level of protection. That meant that it was no longer possible, it was illegal to trade in live uh, pangolin or pangolin parts and pangolin products. We believe that they are really the most endangered and most vulnerable pangolin species within Kenya. So, uh, trafficking is usually transnational organized crime because you find um, there's the people who go and get the, the species itself. In this case, we're talking about the pangolin. Those are the local communities. Then we have middlemen. And then we have the kingpins who organize the uh, export or import of these uh, pangolins, the scales or their meat. December 2019, Wuhan, China, the first case of COVID-19 was detected. The wet market in Hunan called the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market is believed to be the source of COVID-19. Wet markets are typically large collections of open-air stalls selling fresh seafood, meat, fruits and vegetables. Some wet markets sell and slaughter live animals on site, including chicken, fish and shellfish. The Huanan market had a wild animal section where live and slaughtered species were for sale. December 20th, 2020, 76 million people and counting have been infected with COVID-19 and 1. 6 million people and counting have died of the disease. According to the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, 70% of all emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic, emerging from the transfer of animals to humans. SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus, was first suspected to have originated from bats. Genetically, the science that we have today shows that it's um, 96% similar to the one that was detected in pangolin. And because of the emotions and the enormous economic impact the virus has caused humanity, quick conclusions are made. Some are necessary, some are not necessary. It was found to be closely related to the cervical viruses from Chinese horseshoe bats. There is no evidence of direct transmission of cervical viruses, that is, severe acute respiratory syndrome-related beta coronavirus from bats to humans yet. The natural reservoir for better coronaviruses are bats and rodents. The only direct infections to humans have been linked to laboratory accidents during the SARS epidemic. But it needs another animal to be to live in and acquire certain characteristics that give it that capacity to kill human beings. Pangolins have reportedly fallen sick as a result of coronavirus infections. This means that they are not a natural reservoir of the disease. They too have been infected. That is not necessarily surprising. Um, The coronavirus family is an enormous family of viruses. We find coronaviruses in virtually all mammal species. The SARS-CoV-1, which gave us the opportunity to name this one SARS-CoV-2, was detected in human being, but when they checked, they found it in um, a civet cat. A civet cat is a cat slightly bigger than a domestic cat, but slightly smaller than a domestic dog. And in China, they eat it. Remember, the human body is not acclimatized to the virus, which is true. It doesn't know how to deal with it. So, but the pangolin body or the bat body might be acclimatized to it. So you don't see pangolins falling off the, tr- you know, the trees or the ground. Uh, because they have got COVID. There is a way of accounting for this and knowing that the actual virus that we extracted from the pangolin 
is actually has been living in pangolin and therefore we should call it pangolin coronavirus. On the 7th February 2020, two researchers in the South China Agricultural University in Guangzhou said they had identified the pangolin as the potential source of the novel coronavirus on the basis of a genetic comparison of coronaviruses taken from the animals and humans infected in the outbreak. The sequences were identical. Way back in April, compared the genetic material of the SARS-CoV two from human being with the SARS-CoV found in pangolin. But it is yet to be concluded whether actually the pangolin one is associated with the pangolin or it was pangolin in a market. And which pangolin? Was it a Chinese pangolin or African pangolin? It's not very clear. It's important that not just one single pangolin was checked. You need to check very many pangolins. And then there's a way you compare the genetic material of that virus from pangolin. A paper published in July 2020 traced the origins of SARS-CoV-2. The researchers concluded that it came from a virus with relatively generalist properties circulating in horseshoe bats. SARS-CoV-2, according to David Robertson, head of bioinformatics at the Medical Research Council, University of Glasgow Centre for Virus Research in Scotland, the United Kingdom, says, and I quote, SARS-CoV-2 is like nothing the world has seen before. It really is highly unlikely that someone created it. It is not put together from pieces we know about, end of quote. The Malayan or the Javan pangolin was the first suspect. Why do they stand accused? According to a study published by the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health, this is because of the AC2 receptor sequence. The presence of the cervical viruses related to SARS-CoV-2 in animals smuggled from the Indo-Malayan region and sold in China's wet markets where they're considered as a delicacy. But still... Whilst there is no conclusive evidence that the COVID-19 pandemic um, came to people from Panglin, what it has really shown is that there is a risk to the consumption of uh, wildlife products. In Kenya, scientists are also working to prove and disprove this theory. And we screen them the way we screen human beings. We swab them, we take the blood, and then we check what kind of virus. And then we check how they're aligned to the genetic material of the pangolin. We're doing that in Kenya, and I hope my other colleagues are doing it in uh, South Africa and in West Africa. Then we can bring a, uh, to a conclusion. It is possible that... Um, because there's been a, a huge uptake of African pangolins into Asia. And the virus has been living in Africa with pangolin and other animals happily, and with human beings, of course, happily. And then the very moment it gets to Asian environment, it got to another host where it got primed up. Against this backdrop, Further evidence in a study published by the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health in October 2020, further provides evidence that the pangolin is not the intermediate animal at the origin of the human pandemic. Interestingly, the Sabi coronavirus sequence found in the pangolin is closer to a rhinopholis bat from Kenya. Furthermore, more studies have suggested that the COVID-19 epidemic did not start in December 2019 in the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market, where pangolins were supposed to be sold but earlier and outside the market. In an article published by The Lancet, Dr. Robertson father said, and I quote, the virus would not need to evolve in the pangolin. It would just need to be brought into contact with humans and it is still too soon to rule out direct bat to human transmission. We asked Dr. Ahmed Ogwell, the Deputy Director of the African Centers for Disease Control, CDC, what the verdict is for the pangolin. All, all the information that we have um, points to the source um, of um, uh, the coronavirus being uh, uh, other than the pangolin. Uh, so the pangolin is uh, innocent in this case. The danger, even if science acquits the pangolin and proves that it is not responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic, the damage has already been done. Blaming wildlife for zoonotic diseases may result in useless and highly damaging culling, mass slaughter and loss of biodiversity. The report that pangolin could be the donor of this virus also has a negative impact on it. People who would see it and just ignore it would now want to become vandalistic. They would want to vandalize where it is or the, the actual animal persecuted. If you see pangolin, pangolin are sensitive to humans. They don't like uh, disturbance. So in keeping your distance, it allows them to remain relaxed. Um, 
Next thing is there's nothing to be afraid of from pangolin. They don't bite, um, they're not going to run at you, uh, there's no harm that can come from you from pangolin. But what you, we ask is that you respect pangolin and you respect their space. However, if indeed the virus jumped from wild animals to human beings, then humanity must reconsider the way we interact with nature. When animals from around the world are crammed in wet markets, pet markets, and other facilities in close proximity with one another and with other humans, there's a very high risk of increasing the risk of transmission of viruses and other pathogens. We can rightfully assume that consumption of bushmeat will continue. But is it well controlled? Are people well informed? And it's not just about COVID. It's about other diseases. You know, is that meat inspected? Is there any way of making more hygienic? My best case scenario would be stop. If um, you think this animal could be the source of what's killing people, you need to, to stop people. And to another extent, we hope that it will discourage the Asians from importing uh, pangolins. And the pangolin remains the world's most trafficked mammal in the world despite the international ban on the trade of all pangolin species since January 2017. And it's believed that over a million pangolin have been poached to date from the wild. UNODC's notable seizures show significant seizures of pangolin scales from Nigeria and the DRC, with the main seizing countries being Vietnam, China, Singapore, Turkey, and reported destinations being Vietnam and Malaysia. We are reading about uh, you know 14 tons of pangolin scales being apprehended in uh, in Singapore in April 2019, and the trend seems to be going up. Can you imagine? That's an equivalent of 72,000 pangolins. We know it is entrenching their culture. For example, pangolin scales are used in the Chinese traditional medicine. Uh, it, will, it will take time to change that. But do you know, pangolin scales are keratin just like our hair or our human uh, nails. So, jokingly, I would say, if you want to use keratin, why don't you just harvest your own instead of killing animals? No one truly knows how many African pangolins are left in the wild. We are losing it at a level unprecedented that we don't know. I'm not saying to lose something that you are watching is better, but imagine losing something who, who, that you didn't know. So you didn't even know what you lost. It would be ideal to see a live pangolin in the wild. But if the threats of poaching and habitat loss continue, the National Museum of Kenya, where the natural and national heritage is preserved, may be one of the last places where you would get to see a pangolin, either as a specimen or on public display. Pangolins may not be as charismatic as other animals such as the Big Five, but that does not mean that they're any less important. They play an important role in the ecosystem, controlling ants and termites. They are also part of Kenya's heritage and biodiversity. Um, loss, other than just losing our heritage, is that we lose with that animal, we lose its ecosystem role. So if you do away with, with the pangolins, so what? Kenyan communities remain the custodians for pangolins in the country. Pangolins don't have a future in 50 years if we don't slow or stop the harvest, mass harvesting in Africa into Asian market. The examples there is not alarmist. Uh, the Chinese population uh, nose dived. The Thailand population nose dived. The verdict is out. The real triggers for epidemics and pandemics are society-driven human activities such as wildlife trade, changes in land use and climate change, which allows infections to spread. Science is telling us that if this increases, more pandemics will happen at a faster rate, spread quicker, kill more people, and crash our economies more often. Dorcas Wangira, Citizen TV, Nairobi.